Hello everyone. A little while ago, I built an ant weight combat robot called Sergeant Cuddles to compete in RoboGames 2015 out in San Mateo, California. And I wanted to do a three-part video series to show you the design, the building of it, and all the electronics, and everything that goes into building a one-pound combat robot. So in part one, we're going to talk about the overall design of Sergeant Cuddles. This is Sergeant Cuddles. Sergeant Cuddles is a one pound combat robot that uses a spinning drum to attack opponents. This is not the first design that I had for Sergeant Cuddles. The very first design was actually this um, bar spinner that sat in the front and the design just really didn't work out. So I had to change it about a week before the competition. I built this whole thing in about three days. So some of the design was a little bit rushed and I'll talk about that a bit later. Um, I have some early tests of the weapon, and ultimately what happened was it was way too front heavy and the whole robot would want to shift around and it just really wasn't drivable. It did a lot of damage to whatever it hit, but you couldn't get it around the arena, so this was a bit of a compromise. Both versions of this are centered around this central chassis, which is machined out of a single piece of UHMWPE or ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. It kind of looks, well, exactly like this. This is a um, block for one of the other chassis. I have several of these chassis, um, just in case something broke. And this is a raw block of it. It is um, a very slippery and um, a little bit flexible material. There is a little bit of give to the chassis, but not much. They bounce a little bit, they're a little hard, and um, when things hit against them, it absorbs a lot of the impact. As you can see with um, some of the marks along the edge of Sergeant Cuddles, it just kind of chews into a little bit and doesn't really snap. Using this central chassis design, it allowed me to make very few custom components. I had the main chassis, which was relatively complicated to make. I had the actual drum itself, and then the armor plates top and bottom. But other than that, everything pretty much press fit into the chassis and there really wasn't a lot to break. And even after all the damage that happened to Sergeant Cuddles, I really didn't have to replace anything other than this top panel if I wanted just for cosmetics. The UHMW worked really great for the chassis. The only problem was machining it. It was really difficult to machine. Um, initially, I grabbed just, you know, some of my standard tooling, cut into it, and I noticed it just instantly kind of swelled and expanded. It is a soft plastic, so when you cut into it, it kind of wants to expand a little bit. Um, think of it as being like under compression, so you, when you cut into it, it kind of swells a little bit. So I did a little bit of looking online, and I found that you need extremely sharp tooling. High-speed steel is one of the only things other than carbide that is sharp enough to cut this stuff. And if you have any coated tooling, that coating is just thick enough that it cuts down on the surface edge, and it's not sharp enough to cut UHMW. So I end up getting um, one of these. This is a zero flute or O flute bit, and it's kind of faceted along here, and it has one spiral flute along it that is extremely sharp, cuts your skin really easily, and this was the ticket. Using this, I was able to cut through this stuff like butter really quickly, and it helped to pull those chips out. You have to do a really slow RPM. I think I did something like 500 RPM or slower, kind of like what you would do with steel, and I did a relatively fast feed rate so that as it cut through, it was able to make large carving chunks out of the material and get them out of there. I still cut with a shop vac to excavate all the chips because as I started getting further down, they would kind of build up and get in the way. So it took a little bit of patience and I went through a lot of different chassis, but after I figured out, I got a really good finish off of it and I was able to crank these out in about 20 minutes. Both designs were done in SolidWorks, and if we look at the old design versus the new design, although they look pretty different, they actually share a lot of the same components. If we isolate the chassis on both of them, you can see that the chassis has a lot of similar components between the two. The main cavity, as well as the wheel and motor mounts, are shared between the two chassis. The whole design worked pretty well on the old chassis, I just need to shift some stuff around. So you notice that the wheels and the motors on the old one sat towards the back, and on the new one they sit more towards the middle or closer to the weapon, which is where most of the weight sits. This helps it to drive a little bit better as it more evenly distributes the weight along the whole robot and gives it more traction ultimately. 
really only the motors mount to the chassis itself. They kind of press fit in here and there's these little tabs that slide inside on top of that. And um, the weapon drum mounts up here and we'll talk about that later. But everything else just kind of is nestled inside this middle cavity. So I needed a way to keep it all contained. So I have these little armor plates, which one goes on the top, one goes on the bottom and it keeps everything secured and contained inside the compartments and also adds a little bit of structural rigidity to everything. The armor plates are made out of um, pieces of Gerolite G10. Gerolite G10 is essentially a fiberglass resin composite material. It's extremely impact resistant. It's a little bit flexible. Um, it's really, really strong stuff. I got these in six by six sheets from McMaster Car. If you haven't been to McMaster Car, you should definitely check them out. They have all sorts of really cool things. And they have great explanations of all the different types of materials that they have. G10 is um, a version of Gerolite. There's all sorts of different versions of it. And G10 is really good for impact resistance and just tensile strength. So um, it's good stuff for that. The only downside to this is once again, machining. All these kind of weird exotic materials have downsides to machining them. You can machine this with normal tooling, but because it's highly abrasive, the more you machine it with that tool, it will just wear it down. You're supposed to use like a diamond impregnated carbide or something like that that kind of self sharpens, but I didn't want to buy any of that. So I just kind of use an inexpensive carbide tool. Um, I tried like a burr, you know, for a um, Dremel. That didn't work very well. So I just used, you know, some tooling that I had on hand and there really wasn't that much of it to cut. It drills pretty good, although you do need to use some kind of countersink to clean up the holes. And I did make a couple extra plates because as you can see, it does get torn up if it starts getting hit a lot because it is really thin. I think this stuff is only like 20 or 30 thousandths of an inch thick. That is the overall design of Sergeant Cuddles. In part two of the series, I'll be talking about the weapon. <laughs>